Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, sneak preview interview of the um, of the uh, Memphis Python user group for May of 2023. Um, I guess this evening is uh, Mr. Matt Eland of Columbus, Ohio, correct? Correct. Yeah, correct. Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Matt, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, sure. Uh, thanks for having me. So I... Uh... I do a lot with uh, programming and uh, data science and artificial intelligence. And one of my numerous hobbies involves just uh, <laughs> sifting through data and seeing what insights I can find from it and uh, uh, telling others. So uh, that's really what a lot of this talk is going to be about and just showing people, like, hey, here's how you work with Python to analyze your data and visualize it using Plotly and other libraries and see what insights you can gather and share from it. So uh, I'm super excited for next week and uh, for, for going into that and uh, uh, talking more with you. Great. Great. Uh, now you are one of the most recent, um, one of the most recent additions to the Microsoft MVP program. Uh, I, 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 I myself have been in the program for three years and everything. So uh, why don't you tell us a, a little bit, a, a little bit about that, about your, about your um, uh, activities as an MVP and how you sure. got there. Sure. So uh, I, I guess in two words, how I got to, to MVP status would be the words uh, die hard. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I do a lot with artificial intelligence. I think it's a lot of fun. And so I hold a Microsoft MVP in artificial intelligence. Uh, but one of the things I think that put me on, a lot, on the map for a lot of folks was I used uh, machine learning to determine whether or not die hard should be considered a Christmas movie. Uh, and so I, I did a lot of data. One of those age old questions that will never be answered. <laughs> I, I, I should still be receiving the Nobel peace prize any day now. It still hasn't arrived, but I saved a lot of people, a lot of conflict, uh, spoilers. Um, my models indicate that yes, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Um, uh, so I, I have resolved some things and angered other people. Uh, but that's what the data said. That's what the, the models train to, um, uh, but I, I thought it was a great way of teaching data science, the basics of data science to other people. Uh, I love teaching people things. That's what I do for a job. I love to learn new things and share new things. Uh, it's, act, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, the day after my talk next week, I'm starting the next course in my master's uh, program. And uh, the thing that they're going to be teaching us this time around is uh, something called Python and, and Pandas. So <laughs> Yeah, a little, be, little, couple of little obscure technologies that yeah, it, it might, might be, be a might, bit be, of an, might come in handy. <laughs> might be a little bit of an easy course for me this summer. But yeah. That's okay. So you said you said you're getting you said you're getting your master's. Uh, what are you? What are you? What, what specific? I mean, I'm sure it has something to do with computer science, but uh, what specifically are you? What What's your focus? Your area of focus? Yeah, my master's will be in data analytics. I actually just got the uh, a graduate certificate in data analytics uh, just a month ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, I get that at the halfway part, point of my master's program. Um, so it's it's been a lot of fun being able to, to concentrate on different areas of data analytics, data visualization, uh, machine learning, things like that, and just dive deep and uh, uh, learn the things that interest me and figure out how to share them best with the community. That's been a lot of fun for me. And wh where are you going to school? Uh, Franklin University here in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Is it is, is it is it online or in person or hybrid? Yep. Uh, well, the courses I take are all online, but okay. uh, they do offer in person options as well. It's just yeah. uh, that's what works for me as a teacher. Uh, so I can teach my students, and then in the evenings I can learn my own stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, when they talk about homework and extensions and the like, I'm like, yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So you said you're now. This is uh, so you are a teacher and a student at the same time. Now, um, the background that I come from is when you're doing that, you're generally like a graduate student who's a teaching assistant also, but you do this, you do that a little bit differently, don't you? Yep. So I, I did 18 years in industry as a software engineer, uh, doing a lot of uh, software as a service organizations. So this is me kind of coming back and getting a master's so that, you know, I have more options to teach later on in my career if I wanted to teach either computer science, data analytics, things like that, but also helping submit my knowledge as I'm teaching other people. Right. And I just want to check one thing here before I go on. Okay, good. Let's make sure it's using the right microphone. StreamYard sometimes doesn't, <laughs> doesn't pick up the right microphone. Um, so uh, and and uh, so what 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 do you teach? And if I mean, or if you don't mind telling us where, or you know, or oh, and, and what what levels do you teach? I mean, you know, as much as much as you can or want to get into. 
Sure. So I uh, I teach software engineering at a 14-week uh, full-time programming boot camp uh, in Columbus, Ohio, uh, through Tech Elevator. So I am teaching .NET primarily, uh, C Sharp. Uh, I'll teach SQL. I'll teach JavaScript. I'm teaching uh, HTML, CSS. Yeah, really building uh, full-stack web developers. I deliver three or four hours of lecture a day, uh, and it's new lecture every day. And yeah, students. Uh, our students have to focus really hard and I give them three, four hours of homework a day, uh, but they come out of there really strong. Uh, so um, it's the most fulfilling job I've ever had. And I, lo I loved what I do. Cool. So let's talk about uh, sp more specifically what you're going to be uh, talking about on Monday night, uh, exploratory data analysis with pandas and Plotly. So uh, don't, you know, don't give us the you know, no spoiler alerts, but, but you know, uh, tell, tell us kind of what you're going to be um, speaking about. Well, I wore the shirt just to help give you a little preview here. Uh, but uh, yeah, Pandas, oh. <laughs> Pandas is a library for working with tabular data in, uh, in Python. So kind of think of like a SQL table, something like that. You can kind of sort of load that in memory and uh, do in-memory data processing with it using uh, something called numerical Python or NumPy. Uh, and that'll let you really efficiently work with this tabular data set. Uh, so you can start to inspect it, analyze it, you know, drop columns you don't care about, add in new columns you care about. Uh, we use it a lot in machine learning uh, to get your data processed, uh, but you can also use it to sort of explore the characteristics of your data. And that's really what it would be focused on next week. Like, hey, I got this data set from Kaggle or uh, the organization already had it or whatever, and I just want to explore what's in this and then uh, Plotly is more of a uh, uh, one of the many data visualization libraries in uh, in Python, uh, but I want to use that to show you. Hey, here's here's how you see the trends in your data. Here's how you create use like a line of code to get a really slick uh, scatter plot or histogram or whatever other visualization you are interested in. It's my favorite of all the ones that I've looked at, and there are a lot of different options out there in in Python, uh, but I'm just going to kind of show you some of the basics of working with the stuff and how you can get to a pretty quick. Uh, good result with just a little bit of code inside of a Jupyter notebook. And that was going to actually be one of my next questions is why Plotly, you know, over over the others. I mean, there's, of course, Matplotlib, there's Seaborn, um, the, uh, what is it, Boca is is, is one also. Um, why, why would you choose Plotly um, over some of those others? Or why would you not choose Plotly? I mean, no tool is perfect. So what are kind of some of the kind of pros and cons uh, compared to the other options out there? Yeah, I, and I think that's that's one maybe best site saved for the full talk. But in a nutshell, uh, in my experience, Plotly has been sort of that happy medium of I don't have to do a lot of work to get rich interactive data visualizations that I get like full tooltip and Zoom support and stuff like that. And there's also a lot of good helpful resources for helping me figure out how do I do X. Now, a lot of these libraries can you can do a lot with. Uh, the people are very happy with Seaborn, for example. Uh, Plotly just resonates more with me. So that's what I tend to use a little bit more. Okay, so um, like some of so can you tell us um, you know, of course, you talked about your diehard um, work earlier. Uh, what data set are you using? What are you using for the talk? So uh, I haven't finalized the code for the talk yet, but uh, I think we're going to uh, use you a br You're bringing it down to the wire, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had a Wait, conference I, talk. Hey, last hey, week hey, fellow, little, fellow, was, fellow speaker, we're, 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 we've been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to use. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the Titanic data set uh, okay. for people who would have lived and died on the Titanic, because that's a very common one in machine learning. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to use a custom data set. I have some tooling that I use that can pull uh, source code information uh, and create like CSV files out of that. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some some of that uh, some of that data for a custom project and just see what does this tell us about this project? What can we learn from this project uh, just so, by looking at the data analysis there? So in other words, you said you're pulling from source codes from so doing things like analysis on GitHub repos and stuff. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, so I just want to also bring up that if you're interested in attending the talk, which I think that you should be, uh, here is the RSVP. It will be virtual. We're going to be, uh, it will be virtual via Microsoft Teams, but this will take you to the meetup page and you do have to, um, you do have to RSVP to get the link to the Teams meeting, 
uh, Microsoft sort of likes it when we <laughs> Microsoft likes it when we do that, so we don't overload, so we don't overload Teams or anything. But you can get there. Um, so I guess why don't you go ahead and tell us more about this marriage between uh, Pandas and Plotly? Because I know Pandas will do some visualization. Uh, Pandas also has some visualization capabilities as well. Yes, I believe it outsources those to Matplotlib, but okay. uh, whenever I try to use Pandas just for data visualization, I pretty quickly want something beyond that. And so uh, that's why I personally choose to marry in uh, uh, Plotly, because I don't have to do a whole lot of additional code to get quick, good results from it. Uh, certainly there are other things I could have done other than Plotly, but for me, that's that's where I tend to go, just because... Whenever I try to use the built-in stuff, I'm just underwhelmed. Uh, it just doesn't. It doesn't quite meet my needs. It doesn't. Uh, I, I'm always curious about more, and it gets harder and harder and harder to get the uh, the details out of it uh, without bringing in something more dedicated for the task. Now, why? <clears throat> so, why Python? Um, why would you use Python for all this? Because you know, uh, Matplotlib, I believe, is is um, inspired by some charting libraries from R. The data frame in, P in Pandas is obviously inspired by the R data frame in some ways. So why would and uh, so why would you why would you use Python for all of this instead? Well, I, I think anybody is going to use the skills that they have and the skills that they like. Uh, for me, I know both Python and R, and my skills are better in Python than in R. Uh, my snarky answer to your question is, well, with R, you know, arrays, they, their indexes start at one. And that's that's enough to to move me to Python right there. But I'm actually starting to look at, you know, what does data analysis look like in .NET? You know, that's a completely different talk using something called polyglot notebooks. Uh, but it really is like, what's your comfort? Uh, what are the tools available for you? And, you know, if, if it makes sense to use the tools that are, you're comfortable with that are nearby, then that's great. If it makes more sense to go somewhere else, that's fine too. But what you find with the Python ecosystem is that there's a lot of libraries out there that work really well. And these libraries, like Plotly in particular, uh, they're available for all these different languages. Plotly is available for JavaScript as, as well, for example. Uh, so these things, you know, it's becoming less and less language specific, but a lot of people do uh, use, you know, Python or R or other languages for data analysis. And so it makes sense to, to start there. Now, um, oh, I had a question on top of my brain, and it completely left me. So I will take this time. I'll take this opportunity instead to promote your Twitter. This is where um, folks can get, uh, or folks can follow you and see more about, um, you know, topics such as this and, and other topics that you um, also also speak on. Um, now, I don't want to get too far away from Python. But you did talk, but you did mention, uh, you did mention .NET, and that you can also that you also have the interactive uh, notebooks in uh, in .NET. Um, kind of, it, you know, because this is something. This is kind of a new area for .NET. I mean, I've I've experimented with some of the data science libraries and everything. Um, what is it? What what's the one that they call it? Um, ML .NET? Long, no, 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 no. It's um, this. The, is it Sci Sharp? There's a whole mm. there's a whole family of them, and they're and they're ports of like TensorFlow and Pandas and NumPy and everything ports to .NET. Um, but so kind of you know talk about um, the you know the 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 the, the Pi data versus um, .NET data stacks, if you could. Uh, I'm still scratching the surface in the data science aspects of .NET. It's a younger area of it. You know, Python is really dedicated for a lot of things, including data analytics, data science, and .NET is starting to say like, hey, well, we've got people who like .NET and we want they want to start doing this stuff. They don't necessarily want to have to go out and learn Python or R. What you know, what do we have that somebody might be interested in? And so you do see some of these ports. You do see libraries like ML.NET for machine learning in .NET. Uh, Polyglot Notebooks is something that I'm really getting into nowadays, which is uh, a kernel that integrates into Jupyter Notebooks and lets you do you know, C-sharp, F-sharp, things like that inside of a notebook setting. Uh, so these concepts that you see in Python and other languages, they do sort of migrate to other, other platforms. Things that work well over here, you know, they'll work well over there. But you do have this dedicated data science, data analytics community already in Python, and I don't think that's something that you want to forget about. But sometimes, you know, people want to take that stuff and 
apply them to a .NET team or run them on uh, .NET servers. And so, you know, there can be that temptation there. Now, you mentioned uh, some tooling. So you mentioned the Jupyter Notebooks and then, of course, the Polyglot Notebooks for <clears throat> For .NET, um, what what are what are some you know talk about what are some of the tools because there's there's not really you know I mean if you're using .NET you're going to be using uh, at least on Windows you're going to be using Visual Studio but um, when you get outside of that um, and especially when you get into the Python and data science community there's uh, you have a lot more choices so just kind of what what your, what's your, like what's your tooling stack look like well more and more nowadays as I'm doing more and more notebooks in .NET I'm using VS Code uh, because that's what Polyglot Notebooks uh, integrates into and that actually happens to be where I do a lot of my Python work as well uh, in a Jupyter Notebook so for me it's like okay well I'm I'm writing code in a notebook in VS Code it's just you know what language am I writing in which is interesting I I didn't I used to use VS Code more and more just for web development and now I'm using it more and more for data science and the extension scene is part of that I think it's real, yeah. The extensions. I always, <clears throat> when I always do my VS Code for Python talk, I always kind of say, and this is a, kind of a backhanded compliment, but out of the box, Visual Studio Code's really pretty boring, <laughs> um, and uh, and it's and, and it's the extensions that give it the power. But that's also, but that that's also the, the, the flexibility that you get. You can work it. Uh, I mean, for almost any work, there, there there's very few workflows that it that it does not support, and of course. What is it like? Four out of the top five extensions now are Python based, and the yeah, Python, and, yeah, and the Python extension, the, the number which which is the number one, it's got you know so seventy something million downloads. I forget when the last time I looked it was. It's it's it's, it's so so yes, the the Python community, uh, not just the data science, not just the data science and machine learning folks, but the uh, but the Python community itself has really embraced uh, really embraced Visual Studio Code. So. Uh, before we just wrap up here, uh, name of the talk is Exploratory Data Analysis with Pandas and Plotly. Um, here's where you can RSVP uh, to watch the talk. Uh, this will be Monday night. It'll be at 6 p.m. Central. Not We did 7 p.m. tonight, but uh, so it'll be at 6 p.m. Central. Again, via Microsoft Teams, this link will take you to the meetup page where you can RSVP. Uh, any, any closing thoughts that you have, Matt? Uh, I don't think so. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's stuff I'm very passionate about. I think it's stuff that... Uh, Python does particularly well, so I am uh, excited to share it with folks. And this is your second visit. Well, yeah, I believe uh, so. Yeah, per appearance <laughs> because because we're because we're doing all this virtual. I believe this is this is the second time you you presented to the group, so that'll yeah. be great. I think last time was Die Hard, right? So, uh, it may, may it may have been. It, it's been it was back it was back when everything was shut down. Yep. Uh, and that's all a blur. So, <laughs> this. yeah. So uh, again, guest this evening, Mr. Matt Eland from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we will, uh, Matt, thank you very much for uh, your time this evening, and thanks in advance for the talk uh, one week from tonight, and we'll see everybody on Monday. Should be a lot All of right. fun. Yeah, <laughs> see everybody later.